Hi, it's me again, Georgie Newbury, Common Farm Flowers in Somerset. And it is mid-April and we are planting out our pelagoniums in the beds outside the beds, the pots outside the back door. Um, I've been making little clips all day, so they may be a bit jumbled. And in my usual way, I do get distracted. But anyway, hope you enjoy it. This is how we garden here at Common Farm Flowers. See you later. And while we're at it, of course, I'm always slowed down by other jobs. I discovered that this lovely cineraria, which I got in a pot from Plant World in just outside Gillingham, Milton, last summer in a sale. And I sort of threw in here to see if it would survive the winter. And it has very nicely. Anyway, it's in the wrong place now. It's being overwhelmed by the sage that I also left there, which is budding up beautifully. And so I love the sage. And I love the cineraria too, but I think I'm going to move it. So I got my trusty trowel and I tucked it underneath and it's coming up as so far three. I've got two more here. Three uh, and there will be four, five, six, seven plants. So, and I know they get quite big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pot them up for the moment, get them out of the way. Um, and then later on, I'll find a space for them because they're really dramatic and quite big and hefty and I love the leaves I think they'll be great for cutting um, so I might put them in another little sunny patch I have in mind. It really helps in this business if you can identify seedlings at 20 paces here. Bronze fennel. I won't weed this out to make space for my cineraria. I shall keep it. Just another side point. If you uh, fight a perennial, vicious, nasty perennial weed like I do with this nasty bindweed. I don't poison it or anything. I think the skill, it's very simple. You've just got to stop it photosynthesizing. So when you see it, pull it out. Try not to break too much of the root off. <laughs> and you see, ooh, I'm the worst, world's worst filmer. Don't break up too much of the root because every time you break a bit of root off in the soil, it'll just make another plant. But, you know, if you stop it photosynthesizing, you'll stop it, you'll weaken it. And you won't get rid of it, but there'll be less of it and it won't be such a bore. But equally on the subject of bindweed, don't put it in the compost. I just put it, I throw it onto the hard standing, let it dry out and eventually it just gets swept up. But I would never put it on the compost, it's that dangerous. And when I say dangerous, I don't mean it's going to kill you but it will overwhelm your beds if you let it. Look, there's a lot more bronze fennel self-seeded. I won't get rid of those either. And the big munch leaves around them are radishes. Yum. And the juicy, fat, round leaves are mint. Go. Thank you. This is my uh, second assistant cameraman person working today. Um, anyway, just holding the camera while Look, here's that big cineraria I was talking about, and it's come out. I've got three plants here. I've already put one in over there. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. We can, we can focus on that later. So here is the rest of that cineraria I was talking about earlier, and it's come out of the ground in a clump, and I'm just going to pull it apart, and you'll see that I'm getting several plants from it and be quite tough. Look at that. One. Two. Three. And I'm going to pop them in in a hot sunny place. And I've even got some spare root, which I bet if I planted would grow all right. So you can be quite tough with your plant. You can be quite tough with your plants and they will survive. Now, I've had a rough weed around and um, I have got myself a nice barrow load of Delphic compost and some of this fantastic loose poo. This is my friend whose name is Lou Archer, who has a little herd of alpacas and she picks up their poo, dries it and sends it out to people who order it as a really good slow release fertilizer. So I'm going to top dress my pots with some of this gorgeous Delphi Lakeland Gold and 
a little sprinkle of loose poo and then I'm going to plant them up. Pretty compost. <laughs> I haven't pulled out all the herb rubber though because my backdoor pots wouldn't be my backdoor pots with a few without some herb rubber. So I've left some in there. And um, but this goes in the compost heap. Top tip: never half fill a barrow with compost because even though you might only need a little bit here, there will always be somewhere else where you could pop a little bit more. So the pots have all had a little top dress and for about five minutes, it looks like, well, actually it doesn't look anything like, but that's the nearest I'm ever gonna get to a sort of Bond Street sort of feel. And now I'm gonna lay out my little hillies find space for them all and see how they've been in water for about an hour hour and a half and they've really soaked up you can see water coming through to the top of all of the pots um so they'll be really nice and ready to root in the mix when i plant them and just a point about the time of year i'm planting them out they're going in these little pots and beds and things right close to a stone wall. This one faces south and if we go around here that one faces west and it's very protected because of the back door and so while I think it is a bit early to be planting pellies out because of where they're going I'm going to take the risk um, but normally I would say probably not plant them out if you're going to plant them anywhere away from a warm wall until later on in the spring maybe May time. Just a thing generally about planting out plants that have been in pots for a while. If ever you see they've got a bit pot bound like this, don't worry too much. So long as they're nice, you've given them a good water, you can literally pull the roots away and they will then root happily in whatever medium you're giving them. They won't argue too much. If you leave all the roots in a tight mess like that, then they may never really root. They, the roots just carry on going round and round and round. But if you break them up, then they will grow on and be much, much happier. You can always even take a pair of scissors to them if you like. So I've chosen a place for all of my little pellies. Yes, this is a bath. We found it in the field and it came back and it's been planted up ever since. Um, I do think it would look better with some stuff in front of it. But, you know on the list. So I've put my pellies where they're going to go and um, I mustn't miss them because some of them are tucked a little bit behind uh, and now I'm going to just pop them all in into the earth. You can see I'm putting them in quite tight spots but they will get really big and the, this is a ordinary brightly coloured pelagonium and this is a lovely scented pelly. Um, but I love a bit of blinding colour outside my back door, so I'm going for giving it, giving it a bit of welly on the colour. I like it to look like a pub garden. These bigger ones came from Firebrex Nurseries about a month ago, and they were tiny little tiny little cuttings, rooted cuttings, and I popped them in little pots. Look how well they've done. They're really happy, and um, I hope they will flourish next to this warm wall. And then these bigger ones, were cuttings I took in the autumn and they've sat, I potted them on once, they sulked all winter and then about a month, six weeks ago I potted them on and as you can see their roots have come on really really nicely and I'm potting them before they get root bound so they'll be really happy and in they go. Oh it's always fun filming one-handed <laughs> and gardening and one-handed but that'll be all right I'll give it a water in. And there we have them. The heads, by the way, are made by Fabrizio. And um, I'm reading good old Henry Mantel on Thomas Cromwell. So every now and again, I like to lie somebody down here if there's been a dreadful murder or death. Uh, but um, obviously some people never fall over like Mr. Sternface in the background. And here they all are tucked in. There are three of the three of those cineraria that rather distracted me, tucked around one of those nice uh, Fibrex nursery pellies. And then I've tucked in pellies, you can see they're sort of tucked around the place. And 
hopefully, as the summer goes on, hello, can you see me? Oh, hi. There will be an amazing show. Uh, my plastic pots, I will guard with my life because I'm beginning to feel as though they will become rare and beautiful things. And I love a plastic pot um, for lots of good reasons, like they don't dry out when you're propagating. So I look after mine rather than throw them away. They are anything but single use plastic. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Oh, there's one more thing. Hold on. Please don't forget to also subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon with your big fat finger like mine, probably cleaner, uh, to get notifications of future videos. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's gone on a bit, but there you go. This is how we garden here at Common Farm Flowers. Bye.